G'day everyone, Dan here. Um, this afternoon, what I'm doing is a roast lamb on the rotisserie, and uh, I've got it here. It's uh, another same similar size leg from the last one, even my last video. Um, I'm going to bring the camera closer. What I'll do is I'll show you how I'm going to prep this thing for going on the rotisserie. Okay, so I've got my lamb leg here, and I'm not going to trim the fat off. Oh, there's a little bit of that hard stuff there. I could probably just take a little bit of that off, but I'm not actually too concerned about the fat once again. Um, it can stay on there. Uh, I like the lamb fat, just a simple fact it does provide a lot of flavour. I've got this little bit here, I could chop it off, I'm going to try to fit it into the rotisserie. But what I'm going to do, I've got my other little knife here, is I've got some rosemary and some garlic. So I'm going to slice this really fine, or into, into slithers anyway. Just little slithers like such, and not too many. I don't have much and they're only little cloves. I'm just gonna slice these up. And what I'm gonna do, and they can be as big or as small as you want the slithers to be. And I've got some rosemary here. I'm gonna leave that. I gave that a wash before. So you can see this here is where the bone is. So that there is where most of the flesh is gonna be. So if I stab a hole down in that like this, what I can do then is feed a garlic clove in there. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a little bit of rosemary to that and I'm going to stuff that down into the meat as such. In there nice. Into there. And I'm going to do that all over. So you can see here I've got roughly two rosemary leaves. There's one either side of a garlic clove. Stuff it down in there and what that'll do is that'll provide some flavour into the meat. Um, now once again salt Getting salt down into it's going to be a little difficult. You could, and I did toss up the idea of actually putting like a, just a grain of salt. Like I've got the, the rock salt here, right there. I thought about putting a grain of rock salt down to get some salt in the meat. But I think the problem is you end up with a little strong pocket of salt in the meat. So what I'll do is like always, I'll add a little bit of salt to the meat after. I'm going to salt the outside of this anyway. Um, but... What I'll do, I'll just go on the edge there, yep. What I will do is I'll salt the outside and just, if I need any extra salt, I'll um, add a little bit to the final product once it's cooked, rather than trying to put little pockets of salt in there because I don't think it's going to disperse. If I, if I did this overnight, I could probably get away with it. Um, you could probably put a bit of salt into the meat overnight, leave it, and the salt would probably disperse into the meat fairly evenly as it's absorbed. But in this case here, because I'm literally about to throw this into the, um, that one's a bit difficult, into the onto the spit, I'm not gonna worry about it. What I'll do is I'll come back when I'm ready to put this on the spit. I think you've got the general idea of how to poke this in. Oh, that one's being a pain. Um, I'll come back once this is ready. I'm going to keep doing this over the meat just in various spots and I'll come back when I'm ready to put that on the spit. Okay, so that's all been, um, that's all good to go now. So I've basically put all the garlic and the, um, and the rosemary into that. What I'll do now is I'll just hit that with a tiny, tiny bit of olive oil. It's not going to need much. Just rub that in. You, you probably don't even need it really. The, um, the salt and pepper is going to adhere to that meat fairly well anyway. It's got a fairly high fat content. And all I'll do now, I'll just wipe my hands on this tea towel here, is I'll salt and pepper that nice and liberally on both sides and making sure I get the ends to the best of my ability as well. The trick, if you buy yourself which I usually am when I'm doing all this, what you can do is just, you know, it's a bit funny, but onto the table and then just the end here, just rub that in. That'll get a fair bit of that salt onto the end of the meat there. Just rub it in and, and the same as the other end, just pick all that, collect all that salt that I've put there into the ends of the meat. I uh, hope you saw that. You probably didn't. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, it's just a good way of, of doing it. I'm not going to worry about putting any garlic powder or um, anything on the outside of this. 
um, what I'll do is I'll just leave the garlic and the rosemary in the inside to flavour the meat. I'll just readjust this camera and we'll come back and watch and I'll put it onto the rotisserie, onto the skewer and get it onto the rotisserie. Okay, so we're ready to put this on. So, what you'll do, just gauge this first on how it's going to sit above the lump charcoal. So, make sure that's good to go. There she is. Now, a trick, always make sure you tighten these really well. Um, pair of pliers, pair of whatever, and get that on there nice because I've had it happen before and it's a pain in the butt. Pain in the butt is when it, when this thing slips and it loosens up. So what you want to do, you want to get this down by the bone there, relatively close. So roughly the centre and it will come out the other end. There we go, near that bone as well. And then get it so that the skewers go through into the meat like that. Now I've got this little bit of shank here so I'll try to my best um, when I put this next one on to get that Ooh, don't pull it off I don't want that to waste that's the best part to get that into there you know, that there is slightly piercing in obviously you just take your time with it you don't want to waste that bit that's a rather nice bit of meat now that should that should hold I can just then once again, just get that on there nice. So then that goes in there as such. Turn that on. So my heat bed is looking like that. It's all whitened over. So now what I'll do, that's going to cook for, I can adjust those coals if I wish. What I'll do is I'll grab a couple more bits of lump charcoal. I'll put them down this end. Um, some rather decent pieces. I've it took me a little bit. I, I spent. Oh, that's just caught. No, I'll fix it up later. I spent a little bit of time getting this right, um, just letting it break down so I don't get too much heat in that. Um, I'll put a couple of bits of lump charcoal on the end there, just so they can work down because this will start to burn down, and I'll just readjust it as I'm going. Play with the fire, and uh, sorry, play with the charcoal bed, and you'll end up getting a nice even cook. It's actually quite a nice, um, quite a nice feed rotisserie lamb. I've done it before. Um, I was like, going to experiment with um, shoulder chops and put them on here and press garlic in between, but I might do that for another video and I'll just do this for now. All right, we'll come back and we'll have a look at that in about an hour. So like all barbecue, heat management's a really kind of key point. Um, I think my last video I was I had to walk away for 20 minutes because Eric was being a pain, so it took a little bit longer. That's all right. It was the offset. Um, the same with this, you don't want the heat to go down too much and with this the lump charcoal needs to be maintained. So I'm only about 20 minutes in, it's not looking too cooked yet, it's starting to cook but these here have heated up on the bottom and lit up and I've rotated them around, I've put an extra piece there and I've just added three more pieces to this side here. So they'll slowly catch on and break down. So. By the time these are broken down, this should start be getting, or well, this side here, or the middle cooking part, will need some more fuel. So I'll be able to add that from this side into the middle. By the time that's starting to break down, these should be well and truly good to go, and I'll have added a couple of more pieces to this side. So it's all judgment on your part. Um, if you're cooking something like this, especially on rotisseries, uh, and using lump charcoal, if you've got timber iron bark, for instance, Put the iron bark on that side, break it down, because you can break down iron bark and make it into, into um, charcoal and let it burn and let the coal bed cook. I've done that before. Um, lump charcoal is just easier, but it's another option. If you're going to do that, don't let direct flame hit the meat. Always keep the direct flame away from the meat and just burn down your um, iron bark on this side, then move the charcoal into the center. It would be quicker using iron bark because it'll probably break down a bit quicker, especially if you cut it nice and fine, but... I'm using lump charcoal. So this is how I'm doing that anyway. And that'll eventually break down to being nice fine lump charcoal whitened over like that. And uh, you'll keep the heat up to your cook. Okay, so I'm at about oh, an hour and 50, hour and 55 minutes now. And you can see how that's looking. It's at an internal temperature for 60 degrees at the moment. Um, some parts are reading a little bit differently, 62 in parts, 58 in parts. Um, it's rotisserie, so it's a bit more guesswork than it is in an actual smoker or doing it in an oven. 
Um, you can see the pullback now on that shank, which is coming up quite well. And also on the bone there, there's a bit of pullback. You can also see the juices, hopefully this camera picks it up, but the juices are coming out of that lamb and the fat is coming out of that lamb. And it's just rotating off it and dripping into the fat. Oh, sorry, into the coals. And that, that fat is smoking up. There was a nice bit there. There you go. A bit more. And it's, it's kissing the meat with that, that fat smoke. And it's going to be pretty good. What I'm going to do, I'm actually building up a bit more coals here now. Because in a, probably about 10, 15 minutes or so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring all them across and start to crispy up the outside of that lamb. Um, it's going to taste really nice. They, they always do. I love lamb. Well, I think it's better than beef, better than chicken, better than any other meat on the planet. So we'll come back and we'll have a look at that in about 15 minutes. Um, the problem with barbecue, as always, is you drink beer while you do it. So we'll, uh, we'll come back in about 20 minutes and we'll have a look at what the internal temperature is and we'll start to rotate that and stop the rotisserie and we'll uh, crispy that up. Okay, so I've reached about an internal temperature of averaging about 65, 66. So that's the coal bed I've got underneath it. I've been cooking with for about two hours. And that's a coal bed I've started on the side over the last 45 minutes. Broken down a heap of lump charcoal. So I'm going to move that under here. I'll just get this here and I'll scrape that under. And I'm going to produce basically a lot of heat now under this. And the, the principle behind this, or the, why I'm doing this, is because what I want to do is I'm going to stop this rotisserie where the fat cap is, or in different spots. So the fat there, you can see, I'm going to basically now roast that, crispy it up. It's, it's similar to reverse searing. I'm going to really crispy that fat up on the bottom every probably two to three minutes probably two minutes or so i'm going to rotate that now for the next 10 minutes and basically rotate that to different parts of the meat let it really crispy up get a really crunchy crunchy side to it and you can see that's starting to work there now it's starting to bubble and crispy up so i'm going to do that um, i might even go a minute i'll see how it looks once again it's up to your judgment just see how it's looking rotate it a little bit crispy up the outside um, I'm gonna do that now for the next 10 or so minutes and we'll come back and see how that's looking at the end okay so I'm pretty happy with this I right I stopped the rotisserie above the fat cap I just started up again to keep it warm um, but it's looking pretty pretty good so I'm gonna take this off I'll turn it off and I'll get it off there oh, let me grab my pies. I'll grab it off here and I'm going to put it down here on this. Um, I've, I've laid two two layers of foil there, so I'll lay it on there. I have to, unfortunately, like I said, I tied it tight at the start so it wouldn't undo. But I'm going to put it on two layers of foil. I'm going to rest this for about half an hour. Now, like all meat, I never used to be a believer in it, but it does actually work. Let's put this down. Um, resting meat is the only way to eat it now. So I'll get this off. We're going to rest this for about half an hour. Once I slide that off, a bit tight. Oh, there we go. Ooh, careful. I'm going to rest that on there for half an hour. I might even put another layer or two of um, alpha around that, let it rest and stay warm. Uh, You can rest this as much as you want. You know, don't be don't be thinking that you need to rest it for 25, 30 minutes and that's it. You could almost give this an hour and it will still be fine. The alpha oil will keep the heat in and it's only going to tenderize more. So the longer the better um, when it comes to meat. I'm going to give it an hour. We're going to come back. Now I know we've spent all that effort crisping the fat up, I know. Um, but, and it will soften, but you'll find the fat will have rendered down a lot during that final cook process, or that final sort of heating process. It'll have crispied it up, rendered it down, so that should be fine. 
we'll give that an hour we'll come back and uh give that a go so i'm gonna wrap this now it's been resting for about an hour and it should be pretty good by this stage of the night you'd think Yes, I did wrap it a fair bit. There we go. So once again, what I'll do is I'll slice it off the bone there. Now I'm doing a bit of a comparison against last week's video because I did that in the smoker. And the child once again is interrupting. That smells really good. Yeah, it does. I'll quickly finish this off just because my child is cracking the shit. But you can see that there. I'll slice a little bit there. It's not as, I don't think it's as tender as it was last week. It's not pulling apart like it was, but. Mm. There's a lot more flavour in that. The um, the offset smoker definitely makes it more tender, but and that's not too bad. That's still pulling apart reasonably well. It's a it's a leg of lamb, but the flavour in that. And actually, I'll take that and let Louise do the rest. The flavour in that compared to... It's a completely different flavour. It is. Mm. I like them both. Yeah, they're both good. I think I prefer the Offset Smoker. Yeah. But the flavour in that, the garlic and the rosemary is coming through. It's still really nice. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And I'll, I'll have a little chunk myself. Mm. And it's still tender. It's not tough. It's a beautiful cut of meat. Really yum. Yeah. So two thanks up from, from the wife. So, rotisserie lamb over offset smoker lamb. I'd say it's a preference. Not so much a better than or... But, yeah... Yeah, they're both really good. So, until next time, guys, take care.